In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a particle system follow a path amongst a few other things. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. So the f best way to make a particle system follow a path, select your default cube, press H to hide it for now. Numpad 7, Shift A, click on Curve, and we're going to choose the Bezier Curve. You can choose whatever one you want to use. I'm using this one in this example. S5 to get it out, and we're going to make a par particle system follow this path. Next thing you want to do is press Shift A, Mesh, and we're going to use a UV sphere as the main flow object of where liquid will fly out of. It's going to make it a bit smaller. And just for fun's sake, you don't have to do this. There's no reason to do it. You can press G. Y. Only benefit of this is to show you that you can control the direction that it points. <coughs> All right, so we rename the sphere flow source. And now we go to the object constraint properties and we're going to add a follow path and big thing about this is that you need to make sure that your <coughs> your sphere is zero with everything on location and the same applies to your Bezier curve and if you've moved your Bezier curve theoretically if you moved it here or moved your thing here the way you reset it is you click on this and all you need to do is press Control S and then click location and you'll see it resets it to zero right but uh, I'm just gonna go back leave everything like that right now, now that you are aware of that in case you run into any problems you know how to solve it uh, now we're gonna select the Bezier curve and you can see it's pointing forward which is nice well technically it's pointing in any direction but you can change the direction it's focused on so it can follow path facing the path's direction if it were a spaceship or you can make it face forward there we go you can make it face forward in case x-axis and the z-axis and uh, we can make it move that way we click animate path and then we press space bar and you can see it's working perfectly one problem with this is that we're not necessarily controlling the speed so we go back to frame one we click on fixed position we hover over the offset factor with our mouse and we press i to keyframe this position at the first frame and let's say we want to end this at frame 100 so we type in 100 over here click on this we type in one and then we hover over it and press i and now when we go back to frame one and we press space bar we can see it move from one end to the other perfectly so that works quite nicely the next thing we want to do is go to the physics properties click on fluid click on flow click on liquid and you probably want to change geometry to inflow and make the initial velocity how this works is negative will go this way negative y-axis goes this way positive y-axis goes this way so in this case we want a positive y-axis let's choose 30 miles per uh, meters whatever it is meters per second or whatever it miles per second who knows uh, that direction right and uh, now we need to create a domain in which this will work so we're going to reopen that default cube we're going to click on wireframe we're going to select the default cube in object mode and we're going to just scale this puppy out to about there then we're going to press g y just bring it out like that make sure that your flow object is always well within the domain it mustn't be touching the borders uh, next thing we want to do is press tab to go into edit mode press 3 to choose face select choose this back face numpad 7 g why let's make it a little bit longer like that i'm quite happy with that and then we go to the physics property well press tab to go into object mode F physics properties fluid domain liquid and you can see our voxel is a little bit too large compared to our flow object so let's up the resolution let's double it we make the 64 we can see we've got fluid coming from this so that's going to be perfect the other things we want to change is we want to make sure that mesh is selected on there we go and we want to make sure that all is selected here and that it's resumable and the length of this period is 100 and with all that selected we can now you could up the quality and stuff but this is the basics of what you need now we can say bake it in and I'll see you after 100 frames right so once that is done you can just press spacebar to see how it looks and you can see it shooting out quite nicely like that which is pretty awesome 
The next thing you probably want to do, I mean, we kind of done, yeah, um, is add an, well, just increase and decrease the size. So we're going to press numpad seven. We're going to select this um, flow source and we're going to press I with it at, at frame one, location, rotation, and scale. And then we might say, listen, yeah, when we get to 49, let's do it again, 49, I, location, rotation, at scale. And then you can move up to frame 50 and you might say, listen, yeah, let's up this baby up and just scale it up like that. Then press I, location, rotation, at scale. And you might say at frame 60, which is still, Maybe uh, maybe we have to make it uh, 60, what, 56, just so I know that it's within the boundaries. You might say, okay, at 56, we can then press S to scale it and bring it back down to the size that it was. Press I, location, rotation, and scale. And all you have to do is choose your domain again, scroll all the way down, free all, and bake it in. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, now that it's baked in, we can press spacebar and play it, and you can see this in action. At frame 50, it's going to get a lot larger. And one last thing that you might want to do that you might not like um, if we press play, you might not like how it's shooting like that. Maybe you want it to flow a little bit better. All you need to do is go to your uh, flow source. And if you lower the, the speed of the flow, it will be closer together. So it will look like this. So if we press play now, now that I've baked it in, it's a lot more solid. Let me just pause this quickly. Shade smooth. But yeah. That's, that's it for this tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. One more time, last play, play through. This time we're just gonna change the liquid, give the liquid a color. So we click on the cube and we click on principle, change it to glass and uh, make it a tad blue. And that should look pretty good. Let's look at preview. There we go. That looks quite nice. And uh, let's go to material viewport. And obviously we want to hide the flow source. And but we do want to shade that smooth. See it nice and solid. And then after uh, it speeds up again after this big burst and it's separated in bits. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.